Bobby Golden, I'm the rice and soil fertility agronomist at Delta Research and Extension Center for Mississippi State University. I would say the last 15 years, we've moved to more of a grain-based system where historically in the Mid-South and, and specifically Mississippi, we used to grow a lot of cotton. And as we've changed that grain-based system, our demand for K has increased because nutrient removal of grain crops uh, is much greater than in cotton. Two things changed in 2007. That is really the year that corn acreage shot up and cotton acreage declined. Growers benefited economically, but in the long run with the K removal rates in the soil, uh, coinciding when that change happened, we had potash prices spike. So as potash prices spike, producers really couldn't afford to put it out for a couple years. So that coupled with moving to the grain-based system and that nutrient demand and removal being so much greater led us into a hole where we have declined our soil test levels and now 15, 10, 13 years later, uh, we're still trying to climb out of that hole. So to further illustrate this, if you look at our centennial rotation we have here at the Delta Research and Extension Center, uh, Dr. Wayne Ebelhair set this up some odd 17 years ago and we've got monoculture cotton compared to a soybean and corn rotation system. And we see over the course of that time that cotton has removed approximately 688 pounds of K2O per acre versus that soybean corn one-to-one -one rotation that's removed 1,228 pounds of K2O per acre in the same time frame. If you look at a, a average soybean crop, it's gonna remove about 1.2 pounds of K2O per bushel whereas a cotton crop is going to remove about 19 pounds of K2O per bale. So if you put that on an equal playing field across the acre, a 50 bushel soybean crop is going to remove about 60 pounds of K2O, and a three bale cotton crop is going to remove about 57 pounds of K2O. Our state average soybean yields 46, but here in the Delta area where we're standing today, most of our producers are growing 75 and 80 bushel soybeans, which is going to remove a vast amount more potash than a very good cotton crop even today of three bales. So if you're looking at what we consider the greater Mid-South up and down the Mississippi River from the Boot Hill of Missouri to the Gulf of Mexico which is encompassing Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi along the Delta areas we see our K removal rates outpacing our nutrient input rates or our K applications made to those soils. Our data for soybean specifically, if you're in the low range or the very low range, average across both those, we're getting at least a 10 bushel soybean yield increase when we apply potash fertilization. If you look at the K use ratios by crops relative to the K inputs applied by farmers, you can see in the intensive ag areas throughout the Mid-South region, K application rates are not keeping up with removal rates. Like anything in the world, if you're looking at this map, you can look at it and say yellow and orange is caution and red is we've went past the stop sign and we've already got to do something because we're going in a hole faster than we're coming out. In short, soil testing is a roadmap to success. You have to know what you have starting with to get to the end goal. You wouldn't start out going to Memphis from Chicago without a road map. You're not gonna start out growing a soybean crop without a soil test. That soil test is gonna allow you to make those difficult decisions of when you need to fertilize and when you don't. And it can save you money on both ends of the spectrum. Because if you're low on soil test potassium, you're going to lose yield. With current low commodity prices, current uh, instability in the world, a lot of people may be considering skipping fertilization. I would say before you even consider skipping fertilization, sit down, come talk to us, show us your soil test. If you don't have a soil test, there's no way I can tell you how to manage your nutrient inputs on your farm. What I generally tell producers is that if you look at the production budgets for soybean in the state of Mississippi, approximately 20% is spent on fertilization. If you also look at that production budget, a very similar amount is spent on herbicides. No one would grow a soybean crop without spending money on a herbicide, so why do we want to consider growing a soybean crop without spending money for fertilization? Herbicides and fungicides are crop protection products. They protect your yield. 
Fertilization is the only product we add to a crop that makes yield.